Hi, I'm Eddie Kramer. I'm sitting here at Waves in Tel Aviv with Mike from Waves, and we're going to uh, try to do some experimentation with a Waves plugin, a vintage plugin. What we need to look at is the fact that there is this tremendous engine behind all this new product, whether it's an SSL uh, preset, whether it's an API, whether it's a nice compressor of a vintage quality. These are all great working tools, but if you don't know how to use it, you've got to go back to the very beginning. You've got to think to yourself, all right, where do you put the microphone? Uh, what kind of EQ do you use on that microphone? Do you EQ it now or do you EQ it later? It's fantastic technology. I mean, it's, I mean, we can do things at the push of a button that took us days to figure out. Um, in a way, it's too easy, but then by making it so easy just to put the faders up and just sort of hit a couple of buttons, it makes the process after the fact very hard. I think a lot of the problem is that you have so many choices and yeah, you could put up 20 mics, put them through whatever you want to, record into Pro Tools, and then keep going. I mean, you end up with maybe, I don't know, 60, 70, 80, 100 tracks, and then it makes the decision-making process uh, delayed, so that at the end of the day, you're sitting there for a, a month, just trying to make decisions as to what you're supposed to what you're supposed to do with the sound because there are just so many options. In my opinion, it is better to make the decision right then and there. Maybe there's a way that I can impart some of my knowledge to this 19-year-old kid who's now gonna who's bought a system and has got the ability to use an SSL or a Neve or something like that. And maybe I can give him some presets that will help the process. If you take the Hendrix uh, records as an example, we had four tracks. That's basically all you had to work with. Uh, effects, what do we have? EQ, reverb, compression, that's it. That's all you had. So you had to be really inventive. And the decision-making process was right then and there. You had to commit to the stereo balance of the drums that the bass was going to be one particular sound, that the guitar was one particular sound. You have four tracks, that's it. And then if you needed more tracks, you would take those four, you'd mix them down to two tracks of another machine, and then you'd fill that up. So now you go four to four. It's a half inch four track at 15 IPS. All right, now you fill the second machine up. Now you take those four and you bounce it back to the first machine, fill up those two tracks and, and record two more. So you've gone four to four to four, and sometimes, you know, you, you would do this and you have to make sure that your internal balance is correct each time. So there is a strong sense of commitment to the final product. 